Hi, good morning. Welcome to Hikate's Crossing. I don't know what happened. I went through the video and suddenly realized it had stopped recording after 51 seconds. No idea why. But anyway, so let us begin again. What I was saying was, we welcome to Wednesday Healing. We have been following this book, Who Were You? We've been talking about reincarnation. We've been going through the different processes. We've done chapter one. We've begun chapter two. We looked at birth. And now we're going to look at death. But what I want to do first was actually do a tarot reading with the Starman Tarot. That one there. And I'm using the Crystal Alley cards. Okay. The Evolution Edition. And I'm going to use the Pink Floyd playing cards. Okay. But firstly what I want you to do is take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Nice deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, opening yourself up. That's it. Now close your eyes and do that again. Okay, as you put your arms up, you're inhaling. As you put your arms down, you're exhaling through your mouth. So you're inhaling through your nose. And exhaling through your mouth. Right, are we ready? Okay, I actually shuffled the cards. And some of the cards fell out. And I put them back upside down. Now let me pull them over because I want to do this again in the right order. Okay. Let us begin with the Tower card. Now what I was saying was the Tower card reminds us that things may be crumbling around us. Our walls or barriers might be clearing, might be moving away from the old as we start to discover more about where we, you know, who we were through the reincarnation. We've looked at new possibilities, new thoughts. Maybe it's given us some food, uh, some food for thought. And, you know, there might be some things that you were, that resonate, some things that don't. It doesn't matter. This reminds us that, you know, there's this explosion, this, this enlightenment, this under, new understanding as we allow the walls and the barriers those things that have contained us maybe in some old beliefs or old ways of thinking are actually starting to crumble and peel away and allow ourselves to see the core of who we truly are as an individual. So I love that first card. Okay, the second card that came out was the Two of Pentacles. And the Two of Pentacles is that sense of you know, what's our priorities? What's important? What are we juggling? You know, why do we feel like there's so much going on with what's happening with us at this time? You know, we feel like, it, especially if we're sort of allowing these walls to crumble, maybe these things are coming to the forefront. We're looking suddenly, looking at, oh, you know, we've got so much going on, so much prior, you know, what's our priority? What's important? What do we need to, how do we manage our physical world. How do we how do we manage what's actually going on us physically when spiritually this awakening is happening, this this explosion, this breaking down of old barriers and things going on. And then we've got this this king of um, wands coming in, and he's got this new enterprises, new business opportunity, maybe on some level, it's, you know, it's a venture, um, he's got this passion and this drive, he may not yet have all the information that he actually needs, but he's got this motivation and this drive, because he sees things around him, you know, the walls are clearing, he's got this opportunity, he suddenly realised what's important to him, and and he's going, wow, you know, there's this opportunity for me to do this and do that. And I've got this passion and this drive and this motivation. 
and it starts with a thought, starts with a spark of an idea. That's the Ace of Wands. So you've got this idea, this create, this creative, maybe project or venture, you know, and it's got this thought. You've got the perceptions of it of what what's possible. You know, no action's actually being taken yet. This is just the first thought that's come through. There's no actual action being taken. Oops, sorry, Ace of Wands. Sorry. Then you've got the sun, and the sun is talking about things being exposed. So we've got the Ace of Wands, which I was talking about things um, coming through, this thought, this idea, and you've got the sun card knowing that everything's being exposed, everything's sort of coming to the forefront in a way, but it's giving you a sense of pure happiness and bliss and contentment and wow, just everything's just feeling like it's just such a positive energy and it's just moving in the right direction. So the Crystal Alley cards that flew out, the first one was Chris Akola with the um, Sacred Sound. So that's definitely about self-expression, about expressing who we are as an individual, being able to express what's important to us, being able to express clearly what's actually happening to us at this time and we we actually want what do we actually want to achieve so then you've got the um, convergence with the uh, chiasolite light crystal and this is talking very much about a sense of everything sort of coming together in the right direction when you can express who you truly are and you allow the um, walls to crumble you allow yourself to look at what's, you know, what's your priorities as you're given new opportunities with great thoughts, you know, and you've got this sense of happiness and joy is, and the sense of vulnerability as well coming through. So this is saying that everything's sort of coming together in the right path, you're doing the right things, you're really sort of starting to take the right action, you've got the right thoughts going on, you've got this whole sense of, um, I feel, feel like spiritually everything's sort of coming together for you, everything's sort of starting to make sense with where you are and what's been happening for you. So with the Starman Tarot and the Crystal Alley cards, let's have a look at the Pink Floyd. I know they're playing cards, but I love the colours and the um, and the, some of the imagery in the cards. They're just amazing. So let's have a look at what's important. Okay, straight away, I know this is the Joker, but to me, straight away, I look at the red and it's telling me stay grounded. Make sure um, you're grounded, you've got your vitality, your energy is really, really important. So what are you doing to make sure that you have that energy that you need? What are you, how are you um, maintaining your energy? What's really important for you? You know, what, what, what um, vitamins or what food, what nourishment are you actually having? Are you sleeping enough? Are you doing all the things that you need to do so that you are able to stay grounded in your own energy, your own um, vitality? Very, very important. Okay, this one here is sticking out. And this is actually the five of clubs, five of, sorry I have to squint at this one, but it's so tiny, five of clubs. But for me I'm getting the sense of communicating, staying grounded, being in your power, um, a lot of healing going on, um, a lot of communication, a lot of being able to actually stay in this magic of energy, being able to stay in the creative um, passion and being able to stay in that energy and that vitality through healing, through communication, wow, making sure you're staying grounded, neat card, neat, neat, neat card, lots going on and I get the sense of a lot of um, so much energy going on, be careful you don't um, scatter your scatter your energy, don't make sure you, you try and bring it all together again, remember to keep bringing that energy back to it. So let's see, I'm trying not to do such a big reading because we've got this um, book to do yet, whoa, okay, coming out, 
Now we've got this building here. So I feel like a sense of maybe an institute. Maybe you're dealing with um, an institute of some sort. So you might be going going somewhere to help find yourself. Ah, it's nine of hearts. So that I feel like you're moving through. And, you know, it's initiation. I feel like you're moving into new levels of awareness. And I feel like it's a it's to do with the relationships you're having around with other people. So I think the building is, is very important. It's an institute of some sort. Could be a school or a workplace, hospital maybe, or a wellness centre. Somewhere that is um, going to help you to move through and um, how you deal with the relationships. It's like the relationships are moving through into new levels of awareness, um, maybe into new possibilities, um, whether that's an intimate relationship or a work relationship, friendships, um, colleagues or people of similar minds. Maybe it's that it's a place that you find yourself um, managing, rela uh, moving through into new levels of awareness within the relationships. So I think that's really important. To, and I'm just checking to see if there was anything else that we needed to know today to wrap up the reading overall. Okay. One more. Here we go. Last one here. Again, I get this sense of, okay, I've got a light... I've got a light moving through. So I feel here that there's this rainbow of hope coming through and it's going to allow you to maybe stay more focused. So I think with once you, once all your chakras and everything are completely balanced, you're going to find yourself much more in focus, even though there may be some chaos around you. I feel like you're going to sort of get into that much more focused vocal arm point so remember stay grounded making sure that you bring all that energy that you've got to one point remembering that there are people around you or there's a building of some sort that's going to allow you to move into new levels of awareness so maybe you're going to do some sort of course or seminar or something like that that's going to allow you to actually bring everything into much more focused energy so you're going to be able to move forward much clearer. So remember, everything coming together, a lot of self-expression. You're allowing yourself to um, feel those walls, those things that are crumbling, that, that those barriers crumble around you. And you're going to start sort of moving into new directions, new enterprises, new business opportunities, maybe. Um, something's going to bring you into a new level of self-awareness. Okay, so that's it. Let's get started. Who were you? We have discussed as you've, we're on video eight now. So we've looked at, so now we're up to what is death? Okay. I don't know if that's bright enough whether I can actually read this terrible lighting in this place. Unfortunately, when the weather's like this. Oh, hopefully that's not going to, it's not too much, is it? Oops, I don't want to stand on my boxes. Okay, so what is... Oh my God, we're already a quarter of an hour. Okay, an old lady gave this description of her mother's death at the age of 56 in 1921. It was unknown for mother ever to be ill, but the last weekend she felt unwell enough to stay in bed for a couple of days. On Monday, she got up and drank a little soup I'd made for her. During the afternoon, she complained only of feeling weak and went upstairs to rest. I supported her as she lay on, her, on the bed and we talked a little. She said she felt very tired and closed her eyes, although she did not sleep. It was perhaps five minutes later that she died, quietly just lying there in my arms. I knew the moment that she had died, but I got the hand mirror off the table and held it close to her mouth to check. There was no breath on it. Defining death. Death is an end to physical life, but what exactly happens? And how can we be sure a person has died? A dead body is quite clearly no longer a living person. Quite often, 
Because the face muscles relax, a dead person may look more peaceful than when living. Death is an absence of life. Something is missing, and only a body remains. But even that is not quite true. The body may look like the person we knew, but is, but it is no longer as we knew it. Apart from the obvious sensation of breathing and blood circulation, the normally less obvious functions such as digestion, cell manufacture, nerve impulses and hormone production have stopped and other changes are taking place. The protein molecules from which the body is built begin to break down into simpler molecules within hours of death. The suppleness of muscles and tissues is gone and rigor mortis sets in. A dead body does not bleed. Apart from minor dribbles, cuts and other injuries only bleed when a person's heart is still pumping. A popular fiction in which bodies are found lying in pools of blood may never mention the painful truth that the victim bled to death. Clearing the breathing tubes and stopping the loss of blood from an injury is important when saving life. What is clinical death? Death is defined medically as the absence of clinically detectable signs of life. For example, the heart stops the breathing, stops like for an extended period of time. The blood pressure drops so low to be undetectable. The pupils of the eyes dilate totally and the body temperature drops and continues to decrease. These criteria have been used by doctors and laymen for centuries. Modern technology has made it easier to detect signs of life that could be missed, but the criteria remain similar. Resur resuscitation methods have also improved. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, injections of hormonal substances, electrical shock or pressure to start the heart beating, all these are commonplace. But for how long are they useful? In general, a resuscitation emergency will not last longer than 30 minutes, although the average is much shorter than that. What does brain dead mean? The electronephlograph machine can amplify and record a trace of the minute electrical potential of the brain. In some cases, the pronouncement of death is made when the EEG readings are flat because there is no electrical activity in the brain. However, it is really possible to have an EEG machine to, um, to hand or the time available to set it up as an emergency. Only in an intensive care unit is such a procedure possible. Even the EEG machine um, reading is fallible. Resuscitation has taken place even after a flat reading. Hypothemia or drug overdoses both tend to depress brain function so low that a flat reading appears on the, on the trace. In reality, clinical determinants are far more reliable. What is life support machine? Any equipment that is used to replace a function of the body is life supporting. Kidney machines cleanse the body. Iron lungs replace the breathing functions and pacemakers keep the heart beating regularly. Yet none of them are life-giving machines. Like the incubators used for premature babies, they are only death preventers. Are you living your, your dying? Are you living your dying all your life? Are you living your dying all your life? Many of the cells of the, your body are dying and being renewed at this moment, such as blood cells, skin cells. Once a month an egg is released from the ovaries of a woman. Most of these eggs die. So do the millions of sperm produced by man in this lifetime. Other cells die and are not replaced, such as those at the centre of the lens in the eye. That's interesting. Death of a bigger part of the body. If you've had your appendix removed, a part of your body has died and you are generally unaware of any differences. Someone who has had part of a limb amputated will be very aware of the difference, and not only because of the inconvenience. When the body dies, does the soul die? All religions claim that an individual soul or a cosmic spirit continues to live beyond the death of the body. 
People who have had near-death experiences in a hospital during illness or an accident have reported becoming disembodied and floating about inaudible and invisible to those around but able themselves to look at the events taking place. All reports feeling at peace and able to think about what was going on. Here is a process of the events told by one young man who had this experience. Is this what dying will be like? His car, his car skidded on a wet road at night. He saw headlights and heard a loud crunching noise and for an instant felt as if he was moving quietly through an empty darkness. He then floated about five feet above the car and heard the sound of the crash slowly echoing away down the street. He saw people running towards the car and his own body bent over the wheel. He watched as people tried to get him free and heard a woman say, He stopped breathing! An ambulance arrived and he watched a doctor lean over his body and could see the back of the doctor's neck and the way his hair waved. He remembered thinking how pleasant and cool it was out there above the street and wished he could stay there floating about. After that he remembered nothing until he woke up in hospital the next morning. Wow! Zen, have you ever had an experience like this? A near-death experience? Being in a car accident or being involved in something like that? Okay, so let's see. How do we know we're alive? This is interesting. Does being alive mean being active, turned on and functioning? Or would aliveness be better described as not dead? For example, when a microphone is alive, it is switched on and working, able to carry and its out its functions. However, when we say a microphone is dead because it's turned off, we don't mean that it's finished, broken or impairable, or we we expect it to become alive again when it's we expect it to become alive again when it is switched on again. The same argument does not apply when we see a dead bird. As far as we can tell the bird's aliveness is finished or gone elsewhere, and its body will not away. Oh, away? Will not away. Will, will rot away. We cannot switch it on again. Unlike the microphone, it was only alive when it was functioning. Although we could describe the aliveness of both the microphone and the bird as not dead, it is clear that we are talking about two different kinds of deadness. So could we describe aliveness as being turned on? Being turned on means being excited, interested, aroused or involved. Similarly, you might switch off when you are bored. But switching off doesn't mean you're dead. It would appear that being turned on or switched off describes our degree of aliveness. So our checklist of aliveness could be as follows. Are you ready? Checklist. How do we know we, you are alive? You are definitely alive if you agree with any of these statements. One, I am functioning. So I am breathing, eating, walking, etc. Okay. Two, other people perceive me as alive. And number three, I am capable of experiencing different degrees of aliveness, feeling excited, bored, sexually aroused, depressed, enthusiastic, content, sleepy. A philosophical view. Throughout Western history, a great deal of emphasis has been laid upon our ability to think. Hence the saying expressed in Latin, Cogito ego sum, I think, therefore I am. Cognite, cognite, cogito, cogito ego sum, okay. I think, therefore I am. Other people might be more inclined to say, I love, therefore I am. And aggressive people might declare, I'm a fighter, therefore I exist. It would seem that these people are, are saying what makes life real for them. So what makes life real for you? What proves to you that you are alive? How would you express your philosophy? Okay. Here are four things. I, da 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 da, therefore I am. I am a, da 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 da, 
therefore I exist. Its being, da 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 da, that makes me alive. Its, da 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 da, that keeps me alive. Okay, I, da 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 da, therefore I am. I am a, da da da, therefore I exist. Its being, da 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 da, da that makes me alive. Its, da 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 da, da that keeps me alive. Fill in the, da da da, fill in the gaps. Okay, you can pause the video if you want to before you continue. Just take a minute, take a breath. Okay, fill out those four and we're back. <laughs> Degree of aliveness. We all have ups and downs when our moods change and we have more or less energy available. During certain periods of sleep, our metabolism slow down and when we are bored, we may hardly move at all, using very little energy. On the other hand, while running to catch a train or waiting a call from a loved one, our energy level is higher. Aliveness shows as a person's face lights up or comes across to us through a twinkle in the eye or a bounce in the step. Aliveness also shows during genuine grief and in the heat of anger, as the degree of aliveness is more often a mood than just a level of energy being used. It is possible to use a great deal of energy, yet remain at a low level of aliveness. For example, a resentful person might use a lot of energy to, to bang the door, but their mood remains low. Hostility comes across as coldness, yet someone feeling hostile can be using a great deal of energy to depress the anger they really feel. Different degrees of aliveness can be felt when watching two dancers. Both may be technically excellent, but one entrances the audience, while the other only earns admiration for a competent performance. It is well known among the great entertainers that talent alone will never get you to the top. Child stars are really as talented as mature adult performers, but they, like animals, capture the audience by their aliveness. Your degree of aliveness does not depend on which feeling you are expressing, but on how alive you are. A mood meter is a useful device. You can stick it on the wall of your kitchen. A mood meter can let everyone know the mood of each mem member of the family in the morning. Okay, so you could do like a mood being from 1 to 10, 1 being terrible, 2 closed down, 3 withdrawn, 4 rather dismal, 5 so-so, 6 average, 7 good, 7, uh, seven good, 8 easy going, 9 wide open and 10 ecstatic. So where are you feeling at this moment between 1 and 10? You know what's going on in your life right now. So interesting, each day you could just go, okay, where am I? Am I on a 1 or am I 10? Am I feeling terrible, closed down, withdrawn, rather dismal, so-so, average, good, easy going, wide open, and aesthetic! Exciting! Wow! How do we know we are alive? Okay, I'm going to read a little bit more of this. And then I think we'll continue next week because it's nearly half an hour and I don't want it to be too long. So basically, how do we know we're alive? States of consciousness. Many people would argue that your aliveness as a human being depends not only on your energy level and mood, but also on your state of awareness. How conscious you are of what is going on around you and what is going on inside you. Okay, what's going on inside you? So I'm going to leave you with that and I'm going to continue with this next week because I really don't want to get any longer than it actually is. So thank you very much for being part of this Healing Wednesday with the book Who You Were. I hope the reading um, made some sense to you. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot, lot of information in the cards. I mean, I love the Pink Floyd. That's the back. If you want to see the cards coming through, looking at the colours, this is from Dark Side of the Moon album, and they're cool. And then the Crystal Alley cards, the Evolution Edition. Okay, and 
then the Starman Tarot come through as well. So yeah, hopefully that's that's helped you for to reflect for the rest of the week on this section of who were you. Take care. Blessed be. And thank you for all your support and love. I really appreciate it.